course, you were the, um, the, the last person to win the title for Ferrari in 79 for 21 years. Were you pleased to see uh, that Michael Schumacher bloke uh, take away your little record? No. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> and talking of Michael Schumacher, what do you make of all that? No, I think from his point of view, I think it's a, it's a good decision. Before that, he was on the pit lane or pit wall trying to look busy. And, um, you know, you know how if you, if you don't find something to do after being w w racing Formula One, never mind where he was in Formula One, it's, it's very tough. And so I, I would imagine he's probably enjoying it more now than he did when he first started because it's probably a bigger challenge for him. If you'd been a steward in Hungary that day, would you have, uh, would you have nailed him? Uh, you mean when he cut... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I would have banned him for a few races. I think that was, <laughs> it was horrible, yeah, what he did, yeah. Martin, you were there commentating on it. Um, that was pretty filthy, wasn't it, that one? Ma Michael's always struggled to understand the difference between hard racing and, and over the line. He, t he ran me off the road in uh, Hungary when we were teammates, but I have no problem with him coming back. He was bouncing down the track, having fallen off his superbike for the dozen time. You know, what's the point in killing himself in a, on a superbike? He might as well go back. They were prepared to give him a drive. Uh, he loved doing it. And I think we should just give him a little bit more time. I, I'm, I, I respect him for coming back because he had the opportunity. And, that, and that's what he wanted to do at the end of the day. So it can't be right or wrong. And I think too, people are too judgmental on that. The mistake I think Michael made was before the start of the season when he said, look, I only do winning world championships. That's why I'm here. And he set the bar just too high from himself. I think he ought to have said, these are young charges. I'll do my best, see how far I get. And uh, I'll support Nico, you know, and, and the team. And let's go and try and win some races. I think then he could have come at it from a different direction. He didn't disgrace himself, did he? He was on occasion. He was right on it. Uh, didn't he out-qualify Nico the last two or three races of the year? Yeah. And, uh, he w I mean, he had some awful races. I think uh, Singapore, <laughs> he had an appalling race. And Canada, uh, where he chopped the front off of uh, uh, Felipe Massa towards the end of the race. And any he sort of hit anything that was moving that day. And I don't think Michael was ever that good coming through track. If you remember some of the races where he just had to finish seventh or eighth to win a title, he made such a pig's ear of it sometimes. But you can't take away the man's uh, record and his skill and his, his achievements. I think he's struggling a bit from not having all the, the deck of cards in his favor. When he was at Ferrari, he had the best people around him. They had all sorts of support. He developed the Bridgestone tires. And, and he was king of the castle in the team. His teammate was there to support his efforts and would often be sent out to check a set of tires that my, you know, Michael didn't really want to waste time doing. So. You know, Michael had a lot of advantage, but, you know, that's quite clever. I would have done that if I could have, and I'm sure so would Jody. And, you know, you look, yeah, you would have. Yeah, yeah you would. Nicky Lauda did. Alain Prost did. Ayrton Senna did. All the great but, champions but, are ruthless. Yeah, but, but you, you may be number one, and actually I had number one written in my contract, but somebody goes faster than you nearly for one practice, and he's number one. You know what it's like. It changes so quickly. And, and if somebody got in there and was consistently uh, faster than Michael, he would have been number one because the mechanics and the designers just start listening to him. Isn't that true? Yeah, it's comple you're completely right. And, uh, and that's exactly what's happened to Mercedes. Nico Rosberg has, has ended up the de facto team leader. Right. Um, my question really is to Martin and Jody. Looking at all the Formula One drivers past and present, are you excuse me, able to identify your favorite or who you feel is the best? But who, who's your, who's your, best your hero, your icon, the best ever Grand Prix driver, apart from yourself, I think? Well, who's second? Okay. Um, <laughs> in all time or just at, in the present yeah, time? Yeah, past and present. Well, I, I mean, I, yeah, I'd go by the results. I've got to say uh, Michael's probably, the, the, certainly results-wise, he's the best. Um, how do you compare otherwise? Uh, you know, I think it took different skills when the cars were earlier, if you think... Uh, Sterling Moss's day, the Formula Fords are probably going quicker than they are now. And the, f even in my day, the, well, I was certainly probably Formula 2s are doing quicker than our, in our Formula 1 cars. I think it takes a different skill. So um, I think you've got to look at every era in its time. But from the result point of view, Michael, Senna, um, you know, I think at the moment... Um, um, Vettel... 
Webber, Hamilton, <laughs> he does, Button. He, he does follow it, I promise. Hamilton. I think Hamilton's the most exciting, probably, uh, and then Vettel. Uh, Anyone else think Michael Schumacher's the best ever Grand Prix driver? Not most popular. You're almost on no, your no, own there, Jody. He, he's the... There's a difference he, between most popular and, and best. Yeah. Uh, Sterling Moss was my teammate back in 1981, and, uh, and I've raced with most of the great champions through, through that period. Can I just clarify, that was in touring cars? It was in touring Formula cars, one. yes. No, <laughs> Sterling K, he was 51, I was 21 at the time. Um, but I, I never had the pleasure and privilege of seeing Fangio race. I did stand on the banks of Silverstone and Brands Hatch watching Jim Clark and Jackie Stewart. And, uh, and, and it's, there's no right and wrong answer to your question. It's a personal opinion. And I see, I see these internet forums where they start really bashing up on each other. It is an opinion. The most complete driver I've ever raced against uh, was Michael Schumacher. The, most, the man with the most God-given talent, and my greatest driver of all time, is Ayrton Senna.